<coughs> May I call you Jeep? Yeah, it's certainly after the all I signed my checks in our Jeep. Did you? Yeah. How'd you get the name? I'm driving a Jeep. I got it. Well, I demonstrated the first Jeep they made in uh, Waynesboro, North Carolina. We demonstrated underwater. It worked beautiful underwater, but uh, a lot of sand got inside to the bearings, you know, and uh, it wore out. They figured if they had a car that went down there and they come back there and re repair it and doing this, it would cost more than getting another Jeep and forget it, you know, so, so they didn't do it no more. So if you would go to water, you go without it, you know, you wrecked the Jeep. Did, were you driving Jeeps? Was this for the military or was this? Yeah, it was the military. It was a military operation. Yeah, yeah. To check well, the companies out. came from the Willys Company and the Ford. They came by them. They put this. There was Eisenhower was there and Roosevelt was there. Yeah, they were. They were checked it out and see. I sat on top. Of, I, taught, I sat on top of the seat and stirred with my feet. Yeah, and all they did to the Jeep was disconnect the fan. You know, the fan, and the battery. But everything was concealed from water, see, shipping them overseas and all that stuff, yeah. Well, gee, and if I may call you that, when you joined the, the Army, what did you think you were going to do? Did you think you were going to go in to drive jeeps? Uh, no, I was thinking of the front lines, you know, you think of the war. When I, when I, they, they, I was selected service before the war in 1941, in April, then 41 December, to Pearl Harbor. So, uh, when I, was, I was doing the Army, I had a couple of bunch of my, but there's another kid from my hometown, when, the, the guy by Andy Stulak, and uh, we there were four from Pottsville, and we went to a little town called uh, uh, up near, near, near Hazleton, and then from there we went to Fort Story, Virginia, and they were building barracks and all, and we went there. And then from there I started getting, and then they sent me to two schools, I went to two, one to Holliver and one in Aberdeen, I went to school there. And uh, I, What did you go to school for? What were you? Automotive school. Okay. Yeah. So you you were you were automotively inclined, right? This, yeah, you yeah, liked yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I liked the shitty car because I was I was before that I was in the CC camp and I was taking care of the little engines down there and pumping water for the ran ranchers during the them days. CC camp, we were all over, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where I learned a lot of it, you know, how to overhaul and stuff like that. And then. so Jeep, you could drive a Jeep, but you could also open the hood and do whatever you needed done it. I took an engine out in forty minutes. <laughs> yeah, I did. In 40 minutes, I took an engine out of Jeep. The guy from the Willys Company gave, made me a special little wrench. It was about that long, time, but you, you get your hand in there and work it, you know. And you take the four bolts off the trans transmission and, then, and took out the radiator and then you disconnect the manifold, pull out the engine. 40 minutes, I did it. <laughs> well, it was good that you had that skill because yeah. you had the unique it job me, yeah. of driving two of the most important people yeah. in the war, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, right. Eisenhower, General uh, yeah, Eisenhower. Yeah, well, uh, Eisenhower not too much. I didn't know, but but the, the Patton I did, but a lot. General Patton. Yeah. You knew, and you had a unique. I'm jealous of you, Chief, because <laughs> you had you had the side stage view. You saw everything because yeah. you were right there. Everything he did, I saw. That he, when he was with me, but if everyone was at the half track, so I didn't know what he did. But I did. Uh, I saw the most of him. He liked the small car, and we were easy to get around. You know. Yeah. Well, we'd see him on the movies and others, yeah. and he'd be standing up in the jeep. That's what he does all the time. You know why? He used to like the kids. He says, "Where are you going, George? I'm going to Berlin to kill that son of a bitch, Hitler." You know. Yeah. Well, that's we what. saw him, but you were driving. Yeah. You were the ones yeah. yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah, I drove. I've seen a couple of pictures of myself. At, but uh, you know, but then, then you don't know. Then, uh, but every time he he used to love that. But he way, you know, going to Berlin. Hey, boy, he wanted Berlin so bad. <laughs> uh, shoot. Jeep. What did you call him? How, when you guys were together, you were driving around. What was the relationship like? Tell us what he was like. He never talked about home. Never, never said. I did. I don't know. I remember one daughter, Anne, and his wife. But I, I don't. Uh, he never, never talked about. Always about the military. You know, this and that. Uh, yeah, and he never talked to me too much. I'd let me drive, you know, don't interfere with me. But uh, yeah, he was, uh, he'd look around and uh, slow down and turn here or go there, you know. And I'd do what he wanted me to do, yeah. But he was uh, quite a lot of quiet guy. But then all of a sudden I heard him, oh no, it ain't gonna work. So, so he figured something that was gonna work. But he, at the end, he go, it ain't gonna work. So he doesn't do it, you know. Yeah. 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 But when we, go, oh, when we got into the, and uh, down in Charleroi, he found a place for a post office, a barber shop, and all that stuff. You know, he's just, <laughs> he, he was sharp. Yeah. Did you, you you heard him when he'd speak to the men? You, how would he interact with the soldiers that he would see? Wonderful. Yeah. And then he clapped for him. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, they yeah. liked him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But sometime when he'd get out of the Jeep and the guys, the guys were doing something, he'd go out and help them, you know. Yeah, you got to hand him to that. And like the one time when they got stuck in that mud and uh, he was out there get directed traffic. And, and Bradley said, George would make one hell of a good cop, you know, <laughs> try to direct the traffic, getting him out of mud. Hold it there, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, they liked him. The troops liked him. Yeah. Did you like him? I did, yeah. I liked him very much. He was very good to me. I mean, never scolded me and never said, but then things that old. Then he does like, like but my helmet when I was driving, I hit the bounce and he bounced him off the seat. He didn't say nothing. He said, now can you see better? And I just, that's all it going, you know. And then when I talked to him, when he, when he, burnt all that money up from the, the, the girls there, you know. And, uh, and I said to him, I said, Jesus, you should give me that money. He said, well, he said, if you want a check, I'll make you out a check right now. He says to me. <laughs> oh, he was he's comical too, you know. He was, uh, but oh, he's always serious. You can see, he's, he's always thinking. He was always thinking about stuff. That poor guy, sometimes he gets so red, I used to get so scared. This guy's going to have a heart attack, but no, he waited until the end of the war. But then I could see, when the day when we got that phone call that he couldn't go, to, I could see the drop in him. You know, uh, when he, they called and said you can't go to Berlin, yeah, that the yeah. Russians were going to take over Berlin, or yeah. at least the, yeah, the Soviets. Wanted, then he couldn't, he wasn't allowed to go. Yeah, and you, you were he, there when he got that call. Yeah, I was in, in our cheap and we had a radio from uh, from Bradley. You know, we had a contact with Bradley, and then the uh, Eisenhower said you don't do this, you don't do that. And, and he never did, just and all of a sudden, he looked up and you could see tears coming out of his eyes. This is what he fought for. He wanted to get in there, you know. He wanted to get to Berlin. Oh, he wanted to get to Berlin, yeah. But he never went that I know of. Not that I never know of that he went into Berlin, no. How long were you all together, do you remember? From 1944 to 45, from the invasion of France to the end of war. I've been with him, but I've stayed longer than I had to get, I had to get his papers done, his this, this, to take all the maps down off the tray, off his truck and all, yeah. We had a, they had a van made for him. He never slept in it, slept on the ground, yeah. I kept all his clothes and the maps in there on the table and there. And he had a, 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 a sleeping bag, you know, never used it. He sleep on the ground. He sleep on the ground. Yeah, and Nancy Francie slept on top of that, a, a, barn, a barn roof or something, whatever it was. He just slept on there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and one time they were bombing the place where he was. He was at some bitch. He found out where I'm at. You know. <laughs> oh, he was a comedian, but he was good deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then he always asked me if I was all right, so and so and so. And I tell him I just, I, I, I said to him, I said, I haven't taken a leak for three days. He says, Uh oh. So we went to an, a stop, and he said, they sent me down. They gave me two canteens of water. They put pills in each one of it. I had to drink them all right there. And boy, from then on, I went to the bathroom, you know. Yeah, never got washed there for a while. About 30 days, we never got to clean up. Well, you know. And he was with us, too. He was just right there next door to us. Would he be given, uh, when, when you were carrying him around, he was, in, was he in constant communication with uh, the other generals? Or? No, 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 no. He never, he turned that damn thing off. I don't want to hear it, you know. He knows what he's doing, what he's got to do. Yeah, and then so sometime maybe he wants to get a hold of Bradley, and then he'd, he'd turn it around. So we turn it around sometime, he'd see if they had some messages for him. And, uh, yeah, he don't want to hear that squeaking noise. <laughs> yeah, it shucks. <laughs> Yeah, he was, he was all right, a great general, he was a wonderful person. He liked his men, they liked, they liked him, they used to talk about blood and guts, but they liked him. Well, we hear a lot of stories, and you've heard a lot of the stories about him as well. Um, uh, when you hear these stories about General Patton, yeah. do they, are you sad? Some, they, some of them is true, some of them they just, that's, you know, that I know, never, never heard of it, you know, something like that, yeah. We're talking with uh, Tech Four Francis J. Jeep Sanza, driver for General Dwight D. Eisenhower and George Patton. Uh, he served with the U.S. Army's 3457th Ordnance Medium Automotive Maintenance Company. Simply put, he was just one of the best mechanics in the Army. We had, you know what we had? We had the three uh, mechanics for the General Motors. They were the all officers, all captains and the lieutenants they were. They were they, they they were sharp. They, well, they knew how where, how this thing was put together, you know, and they they, they were they, yeah yeah, but they they were great. We had the best company in the world. We, the, we, we, did you see 
Were they with you in Europe, or was it all stateside? All oh, stateside with them. All of this was yeah, before but, you got over? Yeah, yeah. But, but once, once, once we left them here, they were here. They didn't come with us. So. How many Jeeps did you have to drive over there? I had three of them. But the one, my, my big important one, when I go someplace, I had the fancy one I take with me. Yeah, there was three of them there. I was and, in, the, in, the, in the parking, the parking lot, they called it the parking lot. There were three of them there, and it's half track and the, and the command car. But the Cadillac was never there. I don't know where the hell he kept the Cadillac, but it was never there. He didn't ride no Cadillac. The only time he rode that Cadillac when it was in the wreck. Yeah. He, he loved the Jeep. Yeah, he loved the open air Jeep, yeah. He loved to stand up, you know, I'm General Patton. He go through the town to stand up. <laughs> Funny they never shot him. I, I, I don't know, they never shot him. I'm telling you, son of a gun. Yeah, he, he was all right. He liked to uh, push himself. I did a fancy helmet that we made for him with eight, eight quarts of, uh, what do you call it, lacquer. Well, you just hold that story for a minute because I want to learn about that. Oh, okay. I want to find out about that lacquered hat. And I want you to tell us about those pearl-handled guns. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hold on, we'll be right back. We're All talking right. with yeah. Jeep Santa. Yeah. We're telling you about his time with the famous General George H. Patton.